Good morning, one and all. I am Dr. Katta Bharna, Senior Resident, General Surgery Students. Today, our topic is management of hand infections. And uh, before we're going to the management of hand infections, it is important to know the anatomy of the hand and uh, different types of organisms responsible for the hand infection. Coming to the anatomy of the hand. Anatomy of the hand consists of uh, the bones, which forms the hand or the metacarpal bones along with the phalanges. And there are intrinsic muscles of the hand and there are tendons of the forearm muscles which extend onto the palmar surface of the hand. So the intrinsic muscles of the hand which forms the hypothenar eminence forms the opponent's distem in my, flexor distem in my, abductor distem in my, and the thenar muscles are flexor pollicis brevis, abductor pollicis brevis, and opponent's pollicis. Apart from this, there are lumbricals and dorsal introsia and palmar introsia, adductor pollicis. So these are the different pictures which were showing the anatomy of the hand and the intrinsic muscles of the hand. Uh, you can see there is a dorsal view of the hand which is showing the dorsal introsia which are bipinnate in origin and the palmar view which is showing the palmar introsia which are unipinnate. Coming to the arterial supply of the hand. The hand has a superficial palmar arch and a deep palmar arch which supply the uh, blood to the hand, uh, bones, muscles, and also the tendons, including the soft tissues. So that superficial palmar arch is formed by the ulnar artery and the superficial palmar branch of radial artery. And this gives off the digital arteries, which supply the digits. Apart from this, there is a deep palmar arch formed by the distal portion of the radial artery, which anastomoses with the deep branch of the ulnar artery. This forms the deep palmar arch, which supplies the bones, muscles. Coming to the venous drainage, all the veins, metacarpal veins, they drain into the cephalic and basilic veins, which extend into the forearm. Now supply, it is supplied by ulnar nerve, medial nerve and radial nerve. Coming to the common hand infections, these are acute paronychia, chronic paronychia, phalon, flexor tenosynovitis, deep space infections. Deep space infection is again with palmar space infection, space of corona infection and the hypothenar and thenar space infections. The main treatment principles are, first, we need, uh, in order to, the, all these infections will have an abscess, which needs incision and drainage. So before placing the incision, we need a tonicoid control to prevent uh, exsanguination and to eliminate the limb, uh, to tonicoid control and elevate the limb, to exsanguinate the limb. And then long and extensive surgical incisions for adequate drainage of the purulent material and uh, incision to minimize exposure to the blood vessel, nerves, and tendons, and avoid longitudinal incision across flexor phases. And excess of necrotic tissue, everything should be debrided, and the debrided tissue should be sent for uh, gram staining, aerobic and anaerobic, and fungal and microbacterial stains, culture sensitivities. And uh, after uh, the after the placing incision, thorough irrigation and debridement, thorough irrigation has to be given, and wound management should be that wound should be left open. Negative pressure dressing should be applied. And there is no urgency in closure of wounds. If inadequate uh, drainage wound, if it is closed primarily or delayed secondary, there can be recurrence. And uh, delayed primary closure or secondary healing is uh, usually uh, the wound management. Next, post-operative care is frequent dress changings for the open wounds. Alternative dress changings in the negative pressure therapy. Early motion to avoid tendon adhesion and stiff joints. Multiple debridements may be needed. And if unable to eradicate infections, then uh, amputation might be necessary. Empirical antibiotics are started initially. After culture sensitivity is obtained, the sensitive antibiotics should be changed too. And most common infection types are cellulitis. These are organisms responsible for staphylococcus and streptococcus. And uh, the initial empirical antibiotic therapy is first generation cephalosporin or penicillin. When coming to paronychia or deep space infection, felon, these are all abscess which are usually common by the Staphylococcus aureus. MRSA is commonly seen in community. Uh, so to cover this MRSA, we empirically start IV vanco or clinda or oral cotramoxazole, clindamycin or doxycycline. Next, coming to flexor tenosynovitis. The common organisms are staphylococcus and anaerobic organisms. And uh, the polymicrobial origin has a worse prognosis. So IV ampicillin or uh, sulbactam with cefataxin 
or oral uh, amoxiclavulinate plus clindamycin is given. Coming to human bite, Staphylococcus, Streptococcus, Iconella, anaero anaerobic organisms. These are the common organisms. So, in order to cover this, uh, the spectrum of antibiotics given are ampicillin sulbactam with cefotaxin or um, amoxicillin fluoroquinolones with clindamycin. And uh, animal bite, the most common organisms is Pasturella multocida, Staphylococcus, Streptococcus. For this also, ampicillin sulbactam with cefoxidin or oral amoxicillin uh, with clinda or for patients who have penicillin allergy, fluoroquinones with clindamycin can be given. And uh, suspected uh, community-acquired MRSA, IV vanco and clindamycin or oral cotramox or clindamycin and suspected hospital-acquired MRSA, vancomycin, lenazolid or daptomycin should be given. In case of necrotizing fasciitis, Streptococcus or polymicrobial infection are the most common organism. So, broad spectrum beta lactams with vancomycin with clindamycin should be given. And gas in soft tissue usually involves clostridium perfringens and polymicrobial organisms. These are usually seen in diabetics and IV drug abusers, which are immunocompromised. High dose penicillin plus clindamycin or broad spectrum beta lactam antibiotics plus vancomycin plus clindamycin is given. Next, coming to the common types of hand infection, these are acute paranechia. In acute paranechia, it is the most common infection of the hand. It involves the soft tissue fold around the fingernail, which can be seen in the picture to the left side. So the disruption of the barrier between the nail fold and the nail bed usually introduces the bacterium. And Staphylococcus aureus is the most common organism. And uh, erythema, there will be uh, epinacal fold uh, pus accumulating beneath the eponychal fold, which causes the erythema, swelling, and tenderness adjacent to the nail. The treatment guidelines are preoperatively. In a healthy individual, no other investigations are required. But if the patient is an IV drug abuser, immunocompromised, or diabetic patient, then laboratory investigations should be done uh, to, uh, for uh, count, evaluating the counts. And radiographs, if long-standing infection is present, to rule out the osteomyelitis. And post-operative care, 7 to 10 days of oral antibiotics according to the organisms uh, which are present. And uh, early conversion to the sensitive antibiotics is necessary. And daily uh, soaks in a dilute covid on iodine solution and early finger range of motion to prevent stiffness. And complications are usually failure to recognize underlying osteomyelitis. And when there is uh, underlying systemic illness, like the patient is diabetic but not a known diabetic, so when, if it is not diagnosed, then there is a high chance for recurrence and uh, severity of the infection. Next, coming to the management. The management usually includes elevation and removal of one-fourth of the nail to decompress the perineum. Incision of the perineal fold with, uh, you can see the two pictures. A is showing the elevation of the one-fourth of the nail. Along with that, B is showing the incision of the perineal fold uh, with uh, the of the blade directed away from the nail bed and matrix. Here, uh, there are multiple pictures which is showing the management of acute paranechia. And the picture A is showing elevation of epinacal fold to expose the base of the nail. And B shows the placement of incision to drain the paranechia and elevate epinacal fold with ex uh, excision of the proximal third of the nail. And C to E demonstrates the elevation of the entire epinacal fold with excision of the proximal third of the nail. Coming to chronic paranechia. Chronic, this is uh, usually seen in the middle-aged woman. Uh, it is more common in women. And chronically indurated and rounded epinacia will be present. The risk factors are frequent water immersion, psoriasis, immunocompromised diabetics. And the affected population groups are housewives, the bartenders, the dishwashers, nurses, and swimmers. The causative organism is usually mixed flora. And uh, coming to our management of the chronic paronychia, it is usually eponychial marsupialization. The crescent-shaped incision is uh, 1 mm proximal to distal edge of the epinacal fold, extending from 3 to 5 mm proximally. The tissue is removed down, but not including the germinal matrix. The nail removal if for deformity present. Operative treatment. The alternative approaches are the most commonly done is epinacal marsupialization. The other treatments which can be done is 
Swiss roll technique. The Swiss roll technique consists of elevation of the nail fold and inverting the tissue and folding over non-adherent gauze and anchoring with sutures. The sutures are removed within two to seven days. Either marsupialization or Swiss roll technique can be done and most commonly done is marsupialization. This also includes pre-operative workup uh, because uh, social thorough workup should be done and uh, social history for contributing factors, risk factors and the uh, uh, common population which are affected, those all factors should be considered uh, to give occupational uh, rehabilitation also. And laboratory evaluation in diabetics and immunocompromised patients should be done. Post-operative care, 10 to 14 days of oral antibiotics. Oral antifungal medication should also be considered. Daily soaks in dilute povidone iodine solution and early finger range motion. The pitfalls are delayed diagnosis. Sometimes, because it is a chronically indurated wound, it can be a tumor or it can be a cyst, which can be uh, left for chronic paranechia, but in case it is a tumor, so there will be a delayed diagnosis. And unrecognized systemic illness and failure to correct environmental factors will cause recurrence. Coming to Fallon. A Fallon is infection of the distal pulp space. So the anatomy of distal pulp space is more important. It has a closed sac connective tissue framework uh, isolated from the rest of the finger. Multiple verticular trabriculation divides the compartments, the distal uh, pulp space into different septal compartments. The blood supply of the digital arteries run parallel to distal palings and gives of a nutrient branch to epiphysis before entering the pulp space. Uh, and functions are stabilizing the pulp during the pinch and grasp and highest concentration of sensory receptors are present in the distal pulp space. So the subcutaneous abscess of the distal pulp of finger is called a phalan. These infections involve multiple septal compartments, leads to compartment syndrome of the distal phalangeal pulp. And Staphylococcus aureus is the most common organism. Clinical feature, severe throbbing pain, tension and swelling of the entire distal phalangeal pulp. The swelling does not extend proximal to the distal palmar crease because of the septations which limit the spread of the infection. And the risk factors are usually penetrating injury and uh, diabetics. Complications are the distal artery uh, gives of the epiphyseal branch, nutrient branch to the bone, distal bone, uh, distal phalangeal, uh, distal phalanx before entering the compartment, distal pulp compartment. So the distal epiphysis uh, will not be affected, but the diaphysis of the distal phalanx can undergo osteomyelitis. And the pyogenic arthritis of the distal interphalangeal joint and flexa tenosynovitis from proximal extension. Complications. The blood supply to the periosteum and diaphysis is compromised more than the blood supply to the skin. This causes the bone necrosis, osteomyelitis and pyogenic arthritis and can cause tenosynovitis also. So the drainage of the phalan. These are multiple incisions can be given but the avoid incision crossing the fingertips or uh, distal interphalangeal uh, joint of flexion crease. Protect the distal nerves and vessels and do not violate the flexor tendon sheet because it will cause flexor tenosynovitis and incision made at the maximal site of tenderness. The pre-op evaluation with the mode of injury and any history of diabetes and ev laboratory evaluation and radiograph to rule out osteomyelitis should be done. Post-operative antibiotics for a week along with the daily change of dressings and early range, finger range of motion should be done. The pitfalls are misdiagnosis as herpetic whitlow and unrecognized osteomyelitis, in incomplete decompression of the septa. All this, there are multiple septa in the distal space. So the, all the septa should be broken and should be drained adequately. And uh, inadequate uh, opening of the flexa tendon sheet while giving the incision can cause septic flexa tenosynovitis and creation of the unstable pulp. These are the multiple incisions which are given. It either a horizontal incision or a longitudinal incision over the pulp space or a hockey stick incision also can be given as shown in the figure B. Coming to pyogenic flexor tenosynovitis. 
Uh, here we can see the plexa tendon sheath is a double wall structure with a whistler layer that is called epitenon and a parietal layer, the adjacent to the pulley system. And it is a closed space. It begins in the palm at the level of metacarpal neck and ends distally just to proximal to the distal interpharyngeal joint. So it includes the flexa digitorum profundus tendons and the flexa digitorum superficial, the picture showing flexa tendon superficial. Flexa digitorum superficial is tendons, which is crossing the proximal interphalangeal joint and getting inserted into the proximal phalanx. And uh, whereas the profundus tendons are crossing the distal interphalangeal joint and uh, inserting into the distal phalanx. So these are covered by the bursas, the uh, synovial tendon sheath. The first, uh, the thumb finger has uh, its own uh, ulna, this bursa called as radial bursa. This flexor sheath, it is called radial bursa. And the remaining four fingers, so they merge together and forms the ulnar bursa. Sometimes there can be co communication between the ulnar bursa and radial bursa or they can be separately as shown in the above picture. These are the common variation. There can be communication between the ulnar and radial versa or they can be completely separate. Next pathogenesis. The closed space infection of the flexor tendon sheath, pure, the purulence destroys the tendon gliding, creating adhesions. This leads to a limitation of the tendon function and loss of motion. And Staphylococcus aureus and beta hemolytic streptococcus and uh, are the most common causative organisms. The risk factors are penetrating trauma involving the proximal interphalangeal joint and distal interphalangeal joint. Hematogenous in cases of disseminated gonorrhea. And the clinical features are these are called canaval signs of acute flexor tenosynovitis, a semi flexed position of the finger. And there is a symmetrical enlargement of the whole disease. This is called fusiform swelling. And excessive ten tenderness limits the course of flexor tendon sheath. And there will be an excruciating pain on passively extending the finger experienced along the flexor sheath. And it is not localized to a particular joint or absence. Coming to the management. The management is the different incisions can be placed for the drainer of the tendon sheath uh, infections. Uh, these are open drainage uh, through mid-axial approach. The figure A which shows the open drainage incision through mid-axial approach and uh, figure B which shows that uh, sheath uh, irrigation with the distal opening the sheath and proximal syringe irrigation. The C figure C shows the incisions for intermediate through and through irrigation. Proximal and distal uh, incisions are placed and irrigation is done. And D shows a closed tendon sheath irrigation technique. It is called Navasius technique. The incisions is placed and uh, it is showing the pus, which should be sent for culture sensitivity along with the mid axial incisions. Preoperative evaluation should include all the blood investigations and uh, radiographical investigations. Postoperative care, IV antibiotics, and early range of motion with frequent change of dressings and adequate drainage. This radial bursa and ulnar bursa will extend proximally and will communicate with the space of corona. So the radial bursa is continuation of the flexor pollicis longus tendon, extends from the base of distal phalanx and ends at the metacarpal joint. Ulnar bursa begins at the proximal end of the small finger flexor tendon sheath and lies ulnar to the flexor tendon, which are invaginated by it. The space of perona is a deep space in the distal volar forearm. It lies between the fascia of pronator quadratus and the sheet of the flexor distorum profundus tendons. The common features of the uh, flexor tenosynovitis is it's rarely occur as an isolated infection and the space of corona infection. So this is a rarely isolated infection. Usually the tenosynovitis extends and causes the space of corona infection and swelling and tenderness will be present in the thenar and hypothenar eminence and the usual causative organisms are beta hemolytic streptococci. Ulnar bursar infection, the tenderness and junction of the distal flexor phase of the wrist and hypothenar eminence 
radial bulsar infection infections uh, tenderness at the junction of distal wrist crease and thinar eminence and perona uh, space infection will cause tenderness and fluctuation in the distal volar forearm distal flexion in the difficult de operative management is the incision is used for exposure of proximal tendon sheath and uh, ulnar bursa and radial bursa the proximal incision should be a longitudinal incision bringing at the proximal wrist flexion base and extending 5 cm proximally the superficialis and profundus tendons retracted radially flexor carpi ulnaris and neurovascular structures retracted ulnarly bursa is exposed open and drained the complications are tendon adhesion flexion contraction of fingers and wrist and restricted motions coming to the deep spaces of the hand the deep spaces of the hand are mid palmar space hypothenar space thenar space the thenar space and mid palmar space are divided by the mid palmar septum which is the septum extending from the palmar fascia the anatomically defined potential spaces lies between the muscle facial planes these are thenar mid palmar and hypothenar and there are three superficial spaces also these are dorsal subcutaneous dorsal subaponeurotic and interdigital web space coming to the deep spaces of the hand so their boundaries coming to the thenar space the thenar space dorsally it is the fascia of adductor pollicis second volar metacarpal and first volar interosseous fascia and uh, on the volar side the tendon sheath of index finger and radial palmar fascia radially confluence of the adductor pollicis fascia and palmar fascia at the base of thumb proximal phalanx and ulnar it is the mid palmar oblique septum and coming to mid palmar space it is dorsally covered by the fascia overlying second and third volar interosseous muscle and periosteum of third fourth fifth metacarpals and volar side it is the flexion sheet of long ring and small fingers and palmar aponeurosis radially it is mid palmar oblique septum and ulnar it is hypothenar septum and for hypothenar space dorsally it is periosteum of fifth metacarpal and fascia of deep hypothenar muscles and volar palmar fascia and fascia of superficial hypothenar muscles radially it is hypothenar septum and ulnar it is fascia of hypothenar muscles the proximal and distal extents are dist Distal extent of all the spaces are deep transverse fascia at the level of the metacarpal head, and proximal extent is the base of the palm. And uh, of these face infections, thenar space infection is most common, and hypothenar is extremely rare. Coming to the clinical features of deep space infection, it is most common causes penetrating injury of the hand. The in the thenar space infection, there will be wide abduction of the thumb and uh, difficulty in opposition. in mid palmar space infection there will be loss of palmar con concavity and fingers will be semi flexed and uh, collar button abscesses abduction of the adjacent fingers non surgical man there is no role for non surgical management there should be an incision and drainage is the management so drainage of the thenar space it can be a volar approach and or a dorsal longitudinal approach or a combined dorsal and volar approach the figure a shows the volar approach along the thenar crease and b shows the dorsal approach dorsal approach usually will lead to inadequate de uh, decompression so usually a combined dorsal and volar approach is used coming to the mid palmar space infections so the incision and drainage for mid palmar space it can be a transverse incision in the distal crease or a combined transverse and longitudinal approach or a curved longitudinal approach or a distal palmar approach through the lumbrical canal can be done coming to hypothenar space infections the longitudinal incision can be given to decompress the hypothenar space coming to deep subfacial space infections there are dorsal subcutaneous space infection dorsal subaponeurotic space infections and also web space infections dorsal subcutaneous space infections these are extensive area of loose connective tissue is present in the dorsal subcutaneous space the pus can accumulate over the entire dorsum the usual common cause is the penetrating injuries and clinical features there will be fluctuation in tenderness on the dorsum of the hand with painful finger extension the drainage is the incision is placed dorsal longitudinal incisions are placed to drain the dorsal subcutaneous space infection 
coming to dorsal subaponeurotic space infection, it lies deep to the extensor tendons above the periosteum of metacarpal and fascia of dorsal interosseous muscles. The drainage is done, incisions are given along the margins of the extensor tendons. Coming to the web space abscess or collar button abscess. It involves the loose areolar tissue between the metacarpal heads and around the deep intermetacarpal ligament. It can be seen in the picture that the web space infection of the first web space infection, which is causing the abduction of the second and third fingers. The risk factors are usually fissures in the skin in between the fingers and distal palm or callus. Pain and swelling is localized to the web space and distal area of the palm. Edges and finger lies abducted from each other. This helps differentiate it from the superficial space infections. The drainage methods, there are different incisions which can be given to drain the collar stud abscess. Either a curved longitudinal incision or a zigzag incision, volar zigzag and volar transverse incision or a dorsal incision along with any of the volar incisions can also be given for adequate drainage. This clinical image shows the collar stud abscess involving the fourth web space. And uh, the incision is placed uh, and the pus is drained, which is taken for the culture sensitivity. And this shows the zigzag drainage, a zigzag volar incision. And there is a combined dorsal incision is also given. So dorsal along with zigzag volar incision for adequate decompression of the collar stud abscess was done. The treatment principles of the deep space infections are adequate uh, examination, radiographic investigation to rule out foreign body because penetrating trauma is the most common cause. And uh, as trauma is the most common cause, fractures should also be ruled out. Long-standing uh, fractures and trauma penetrating injury can lead to osteomyelitis that also should be ruled out. And MRI is usual tool for identifying the localized abscess. The pitfalls is if uh, there is a delay in the surgical treatment or if there is inadequate decompression, it can cause in and they are inadequate uh, hydrogenic injury to the neurovascular structures. So these are the different uh, spaces of the hand and different organisms and the causes uh, causing the hand infections and the management, the preoperative management, postoperative antibiotics. The and the different incisions for the different infections. Uh, this uh, the most important is giving the culture sensitivity antibiotics and making sure adequate decompression of the space of the infection uh, occurring space should be decompressed. Thank you.